Good morning. Uh, Magpo-proceed na po tayo sa ating study this morning. And uh, lahat po ba meron ng kopya? Nung, ano, meron na lahat. Sige. Uh, Painit na, no? Summer na. Ramdam, ramdam mo na yung init. Ayan. Sige po. Uh, sorry po sa ilang delay. Uh, tayo po yung magsisimula na ina niya po lahat ay humukha. Tayo manalangin. Aming Ama, salamat o Diyos sa umagang ito na tinipo niyo kami upang mag-aral na yung salita. Salamat o Diyos sa inyong biyaya na may kalayaan kami na makarinig ng yung aral sa yung salita at Ito po'y nagpapabanal at patuloy yung nagbabago ng aming mga buhay. Ang dalangin po namin na patuloy nyo kami pag-isahin sa isang pananampalataya at dalangin namin, Lord, na sama-sama kami lumago sa pagkakilala sa iyo. At dalangin namin, Lord, na bigyan nyo kami ng kababaang loob, pusong natuturuan, at uh, may taas namin ang pangalan mo lamang sa aming uh, paligid pa rin uh, Salamat o Diyos sa ibiyayang ito. Tawag din lang yung si Paul Nesus. Amen. Ayan. Ayan. So, kung nakikita niyo po yung inyong kopya, ang topic po natin ngayon ay ito po ay magiging serye, no? Uh, simula nitong pagpasok ng uh, buwan ng March. Napansin natin, nung nakaraan, uh, Marks of the True Church, Church Discipline, These are all uh, um, uh, kumbaga requirement para matawag na isang simbahan o isang ganap na iglesia. Dahil tayo ay bagong covenanted pa lamang, uh, ang ating naisin ay mapag-aralan natin muli sa mga nakasabay na dati na napag-aralan natin ang doctrine of the church or ecclesiology. Ngayon ay daraanan natin ulit to at aalamin natin ano nga ba ang iglesia na tinatag ni Kristo at ano pa ang mga inaasahan mula dito. Para po mapasinayaan natin ito, uh, sisimula tayo sa uh, terminology and images. Ito po ay hango pa rin sa Grace Mystery Academy sa pangunan ni Pastor, uh, o oh, sa instruction ni Pastor uh, Noel Espinosa. May kita nyo, lecture 2 na po ito. So, uh, nag-jump tayo ng lecture 1 kasi ito po ay Yung una po ay preliminary lamang at ito yung mas uh, magiging uh, beneficial sa atin. Uh, so, actually yung mga naunang inaral natin ay nasa bandang, ano na yun eh, mga pang, hindi ko nagkakamali, pang walo, pang pito, ano, mga lessons sa Dogmatics 5 or sa Doctrine of the Church. Kaya ito po ay sisimula natin para maki- mabalikan lang natin yung background. Ano nga ba ang pag, ano, uh, pagtingin natin sa iglesia? So makita po natin yung terminology and images. For preliminary, sabi po dito, there's confusion in the ordinary usage of the English word church. Marami na ko-confuse ano nga ba ang pagkakagamit ng salitang church o iglesia. No? Uh, the building where, uh, it, these are the, the, the confusing definitions. Uh, it is the building where a religious service takes place associated with the architecture and the appearance. Ito, pinagagather na natin. Kaya sabi, nasan ka? Nasa church ako. No? So, tinutuko yung lugar. The monolithic institution. Example, the Roman Catholic Church, the Episcopalian Church, etc. Uh, ito yung mga iglesia na madalakihan uh, when the uh, Roman Catholic Church refers to their church, uh, Ano nga eh, Holy Roman Catholic Church na ano nila yun, na isang institusyon. And, and then the church or, or a state religion, example, Church of England, and etc. The, the, the states na nag-harbor ng sarili nilang relihiyon And the denomination, for example, Presbyterian Church of America, PCA, no? ito yung uh, samahan ng mga Presbyterian churches, the states, ay... Oh, Also, nakoconfuse ito yung church as a denomination. So the point here is, in determining the biblical meaning of church, we need to see its original terminology and key images. Para madetermine natin, malaman natin kung ano yung biblical meaning ng 
salitang iglesia o ng church ay makita natin yung pinanggagalingan itong terminolohiya at yung mga imahe na pinakikita nito. So, the terminology, the key term ekklesia in Greek, a noun combination of two words, uh, uh, kaleo or to call and the uh, preposition ek which is out of. Uh, so, called uh, called out of. In New Testament occurrence, 114 times uh, nabanggit ito, 62 times kay Paul, 3 in Three times sa uh, Gospel ni Matthew and 23 times in the book of Acts, 20 times in Revelation, and 6 in non-Pauline letters. It is significant that the Christian community did not employ uh, synagogue, uh, except sa James 2.2, 2, no? yung ginamit yung term na synagogue. It is a conscious differenti differentiation from the religion representing Judaism. Bakit hindi nga ba sinagoga? Kasi, <coughs> sorry, Ang term na synagogue ay directly connected in the Judaistic religion. So, hindi yun ang ginamit ng mga forefathers natin or even Christ to refer uh, sa iglesia. So, yung term na iglesia, dalawang uh, uh, noun, or dalawang Greek words, which is kaleo. Doon din natin kinukuha yung understanding natin ng effectual call, kaleo, and then ek are out of, called out once. Doon na, nabuo yun, yung terminology na yun. So in the Greek background, in the the lexicon, though some per perso persons have tried to see in the term ecclesia a more or less literal meaning called out once, this type of etymologizing is not warranted either by the meaning of ecclesia in New Testament times or even by its earlier usage. So hindi siya... Uh, winawarant or hindi hindi ito yung pinaka pinanggagalingan pa niya no um, kahit sa New Testament early New Testament usage the term ecclesia was in common usage for several hundred years before the Christian era and was used to refer to an assembly of persons constituted by well defined membership in general greek usage in general greek usage it was normally a social political entity based upon citizenship in a city-state. So, uh, ibig po sabihin dito sa Lunida lexicon, yung term na ecclesia, which is called out once, is not a Christian, or it's not originally Christian. So, may socio-political implication siya, or inclinations. So, ginagamit din ito sa Greek world before, sa... Uh, pagbanggit nila sa mga samahan which is nandun yung well-defined or oh, persons constituted by well-defined membership so uh, sa usage nila dati mas mas common gamitin yung word na ecclesia kahit hindi siya related sa Christian church or sa body of Christ so hindi siya yung etim binanggit kanina the etymologizing is not warranted either by the meaning of ecclesia in New Testament times Meaning, hindi ito um, original sa New Testament na uh, kumbaga ang origin niya ay yung Church of Christ. No. Ginamit din siya in a civil usage uh, such as po social political entity based on citizenship in a city-state. So, its earliest attested usage, uh, Euripides, uh, nakita natin yung date and si Herodotus, denotes the popular assembly of the competent full citizens of the polis or city. Um, later, with legislative and decision powers. Nung araw kasi, mga city-state pa lang. Wala pa talagang uh, kagaya ng United States of America. No? So city-states, may mga hari-hari pa sila, may mga kanya-kanya pa sila mga leader. And for the usage of Euripides and Herodotus, it denotes yung pagsasama-sama ng mga tao gathered in a social-political um, setting sa isang city, may polis, yung city, na meron na silang rights or may kakayahan na silang bumoto, yung legislative and, and decision power. So may social-political uh, connotation po yung word na iklesya noong araw. The Ecclesia carried a technical political connection prior to its New Testament usage. So, technical and political connection bago pa ginamit to sa New Testament uh, ng mga uh, church 
uh, ng early church. Religious assemblies were given other names uh, such as Tiasos. So, hindi iklesya kagad ang tawag. Tiasos. Uh, ang example doon. Hindi ko na, <laughs> na search kung ano yung exact meaning ng Tiasos. If you can Google it, uh, share natin later. Significantly, none of this is used for the church in the New Testament. The point, this points to another root of the use of ecclesia. So significantly, none of this is used for the church in the New Testament, meaning yung uh, ibang terminologies na ginagamit ng mga religious assemblies, hindi ginamit siya sa Church of Christ sa New Testament. So this points to another root of the use of ecclesia. Merong pinagmumulan. And it, 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 in our faith, ang pinaghuhugutan natin is the Old Testament root. Yung pinanggalingan sa Old Testament. So, the congregation of Israel, the first uh, root, no? Yung congregation ng Israel. Uh, the LXX uh, translated in Hebrew, which is kahal, yung kahal. Teka, ayusin ko. Pag binabasa kasi ito ni Pastor Noel, kahal. <laughs> Ayan eh, may sabit eh. Kahal. Ayan, with Ecclesia. Kahal can describe assemblies gathered for various purpose. Example, war or yung mga assemblies nila, mga solemn assemblies. Makita natin mga text dyan na reference. So, um, the most significant are those that refer to Israel when assembled to accept the covenant of Yahweh. In Deuteronomy 4.10, at some following chapters and verses, makita natin doon, uh, in the original usage of the word, ang ginagamit na terminology pag assembly is kahal. Uh, in, in Hebrew, especially in the three annual feast in the dedication of Solomon's temple. So, this terminology, kahal, Old Testament truth, mas, ano siya, mas, hindi pala mas, dito tayo nang gagaling kung bakit natin ginagamit yung term na ecclesia, which is the called out ones, no? yung assembly. Now, there is an Old Testament word which has an even more strictly religious connotation, which is Eda. Eda. Um, but this is not the word that Ecclesia takes over from. So the point here of the two terms, it is Kahal that carries a more covenantal orientation, responses, responds to Yahweh's call. So nakita natin dito, the Eda and Kahal, between those two, it is the word Kahal ang pinanggagalingan ng usage natin ng ecclesia or ng assembly sa Old Testament. Uh, in the Pauline usage sa mga sulat ni Pablo, this is the earliest Christian usage in terms of the biblical canon. An event of gathering in a place produced by the call of God. Uh, use of kletos, kletos in, in the following verses. And also in a more institutionalized form, the local assembly or assemblies of Christians. So, dalawa ito, na una natin binabanggit, na ginamit, ginamit ni Paul, o sa pangal writings ni Paul, yung uh, na-introduce yung ecclesia or yung assembly. Um, in number two, uh, point one, uh, connected to a location, but distinguished by union with God and Christ, or Christ. Nakita natin to sa... Uh, Book of Galatians and sa First Thessalonians, sa mga salutation, may location na binabanggit. And uh, ang commonality nila, sa kasi kapag sinabing uh, iglesia sa ano sa Galatia. So lahat ba nang nakatira sa Galatia ay parte nun? Hindi. Kailangan qualified siya ng mga nananampalataya kay Kristo. Uh, second point, connected to God and distinguished by the location. So una, connected to a location, but distinguished by the union with God or Christ. The second one, connected to God and distinguished by the location. In 1 Thessalonians and 1 uh, Corinthians, may kita natin dyan. And, con and number three, connected to where the assembled meeting took place. For example, in the house of Brother Ganyan, Brother Ganto. So, yun yung tatlong bagay na pinanggagalingan ng Pauline usage of the uh, assemblies. In the dictionary of Paul in his letters, uh, the term was applied only to an actual gathering of people 
or to a group that gathers when viewed as a regularly constituted meeting. So yung term na yun ay na-apply sa aktual na pagsasama-sama ng mga tao. Nag-gather talaga sila. Hindi lang siya sinabing, oh, church, lugar, church, uh, credo ba ito, o um, uh, ano, ano ba ito, pangalan lamang ng isang iglesia, hindi. It is the actual gathering of the people. Although we often speak of a group of, or of congregations collectively as the church, for example, denomination, kaya nandun nga pumapasok yung confusion, pero we have to understand Uh, collectively kasi yon, For example, uh, denomination ng uh, SBC, nyare, uh, Southern Baptist Convention. These are convention of gathered churches, no? Collectively. Uh, but in itself, SBC is not a church. Uh, meaning, meron pa tong mga local churches. Sa denomination nito ng mga local churches. Um, and then, uh, It, it is doubtful whether Paul or the rest of the New Testament uses ecclesia in this collective way. So, kaduda-duda daw na ganun ang usage nila na denomination ang tinutukoy. Also, the notion of unified provincial or national church appears to have been foreign to Paul's thinking. So, wa wala tayong may kita sa mga epistles ni Paul na kinakonote ni church or kinakonekta ni church sa unified provincial or national church yung pinanggit natin kanina is it a state sponsored church no kaya ang ang pinanggagalingan ng ng Pauline uh, usage ng iglesia ay una connected to location but but distinguished by union with God or Christ connected to God and distinguished by the location and lastly connected to where the assembly or the assembled meeting took place hindi siya patungkol sa isang bansa na ito ang ang ano nila iglesia of ang kanilang relihiyon walang it, it is foreign in the polling uh, uh, letters ayan so an ecclesia was a meeting or an assembly so in number three, a community of believers with a wider reference than a local assembly. May wider reference, hindi lang sa local. So, the description of such magnitude to hardly fit any single local assembly. And the, the references connected, connect to a heavenly realm to which the church on earth is somehow linked. May kita natin dito, uh, uh, sa Pauline usage, yung community ng believers, may wider reference. Bakit? There is the universal church of Christ. At uh, mamaya, may kita natin kung ano yung uh, implication nito sa militant church at sa triumphant church in view of the body of the whole body of Christ. So, dito muna tayo sa special reference. Please bear with me. Basahin natin sa Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 to 24. Kasi dito natin, uh, inisa-isa ito ni Pastor Noel exhaustively kung ano yung may kita natin patungkol sa pagiging iglesia in the special terminologies or special reference. Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verse 18 to, 40, uh, to 24. Verse 18, For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So makita natin, ang reference dito uh, is in the new, uh, contrasting the New Testament, uh, mountain of si uh, the Mount Sinai as against the Uh, city on a hill, 
in Jerusalem. So titigdan natin um, in context a contrast between two covenants, the old and new, represented by two mountains, Sinai and Zion. So the first one, the reference in verses 22 to 24 is strongly contrasted with those of 18 to 21. So abasahin natin sa verse 22 to 24. Sabi dito, but you have come to Mount Zion into the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the innumerable angels in festal gathering, the and to the assembly of the firstborn. And makita natin, new covenant na pinag-uusapan. As against the 20 and 21, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even the beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight of Moses said, I tremble with fear. Ang tinutukoy doon, Mount Sinai, na off limits yung Mount Sinai because God, uh, God's presence is in the top, is on the top of the mountain. Ang nakakakit lang ay eh, si Moses. <laughs> and pag uh, bumaba siya, nakita natin yung Shekai na glory, nagre-reflect sa kanya. So these are two con con uh, contrasting um, images uh, patungkol sa uh, sa gathering ng people ng Panginoon, ng, ng mga hinirang ng Panginoon. So, in the second point, the translation, but is weak. Weak daw yung translation. Bakit? Sabi dito, um, the structure of verses 18 to 24 requires something like instead or on the contrary. So, here's the note. Ninote ni Pastor. The reference in verses 22 to 24 is said to come to 8 items. Ito yung A. Uh, makita natin sa A to H yung mga 8 items na yan. So, exhaustively, pinaliwanag ni uh, Pastor Noel bakit um, weak yung structure ng translation. Again, ha, translation ang tinutukoy niya. Baka sabihin natin, oh, may oh, error pala sa Bible. Hindi. Ito is the faulty translation or weak. Not, not faulty, but actually weak translation uh, ng uh, Old Testament scripture kung bakit um, kailangan liwanagin ito ni Pastor Noel. So makita natin sa note, in the reference in verse 22 to 24, it is said to come to eight items, each introduced by end. Yung kai, which is yung word uh, na end, A-N-D. So, uh, yung letter A, end to Mount Zion, there is an implied contrast with Mount Sinai. Zion, New Testament, Sinai, Old Testament. This is probably distinguished from Jerusalem as the city built upon it. The city built on a hill, tinutukoy doon, yung Jerusalem. A city which cannot be hidden. Letter B, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. The living God is literally he who gives life. Yun yung exact translation niya. He who gives life. Which is in contrast with the reference of to death. In verse 20, makita natin doon sa Old Testament the even the beast, kahit hayop man lang, ay lumapit doon pag umakit siya sa bundok, kailangan siyang patayin. So, yung Old Testament reference, uh, kaya sinasabi ng mga atheist, kita niyong God sa Old Testament, napaka-tyrant, napaka-sama kasi pumapatay siya ng no cost. Hindi. May kita natin dito kung gaano kaholy ang Panginoon in reference to the Old Testament in the in Mount Sinai as against yung yung love ng Panginoon expressed through Christ in New Jerusalem in which people from uh, all tribes, tongue, nation ay uh, kumaga ini-invite to come and worship. Now In the uh, second point on letter B, the use of adjective heavenly for Jerusalem indicates a figurative reference to the city. You terminology na heavenly. So it is the city of the living God or the heavenly Jerusalem. Letter C, the thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. NIV version niya kinuha, pero sa ESV, festal gathering. Pag festal, meaning festive. Uh, nagbubunyi sila ng may kasayahan. So the joyful assembly, festal gathering, should belong to the angels and not to the next category. 
there is a special significance given to angels in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. In Hebrews chapter 1, ah, nasun yan? Ayan. Hebrews 1 verse 6. And again, when he brings the firstborn to the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. See the firstborn among many? It is Christ. Now, uh, the idea is yung uh, assem the joyful assembly pinakikita dito um, in contrast naman sa gathering ng mga saints. In letter D, to the general assembly or the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. First point, the ordinary reference of the church is to men on earth and must be so assumed here. So yung registered in heaven, nerehisto sa langit, tao yun. Okay? As contrasted sa mga heavenly beings na angels. So the title of firstborn connects it to believers. Uh, the firstborn of, among many is Christ, pero tayo ay, sir, basahin natin sa Romans 8, 29. Ayan. Ayan. Yeah. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed in the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So, nakita natin yung reference connects, to, connects it to believers. Uh, gaya nung sinabi sa unang point, um, ah, na, na skip ko ba yun? Na skip yata ako. The ordinary reference of church is to men on earth. Ayun nga. As to men on earth, it must be assumed here. So, uh, again, the believers, ang tinutukoy. And then, uh, the third point, the descriptive registered in heaven relates to the names of God's people. Uh, in Luke chapter 10, verse 20, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So, pinatutungkol sa mga mananampalataya. As also mentioned in Revelation, uh, it suggests people who are not yet in heaven but are secured of a place in heaven. So, yung gin ginamit na terminology to the general assembly, the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, ang pangalan ng mga elect ay nasa kalangitan pero wala pa tayo doon. So, dito papasok uh, yung uh, suggested reference which is the militant church on earth as distinguished from the triumphant church. Nabanggit ko ito kanina, anong dif uh, what does it mean that the church militant ay eventually magiging church triumphant? It refers to the uh, struggles of the church here on earth na militant tayo because we battle against sin, we battle against the enemies of the gospel, and habang tayo gumigera, eventually <coughs> may enjoy natin yung triumphant church na si Kristo ang ating hari at uh, na, kumbaga tapos na yung gera. And it talks about our heavenly uh, disposition. Yung ating ang tawag dyan, intermediate state. no So, um, in letter E, a judge, a judge, the God of all, uh, significantly positioned between the major groupings. Yeah. So, a judge and God of all, pinosisyon daw ito sa major groupings. Um, for example, uh, when John chapter 3, verse 18, is mentioned uh, by John, <laughs> sabi niya, for Christ that come to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him talks about the new testament uh, the new covenant that Christ ay hindi hindi siya nagpunta dito para husgahan ang mundo uh, sa old testament naman nakita natin may mga judgment na binibigay ng Panginoon sa mga peoples and nations so the um, reference is um, he is both the judge and god of all i uh, Sabi dito, significantly positioned between the major groupings. 
um, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Letter F, spirits of just men made of just men made perfect. A clear reference to saints already in heaven in the intermediate state. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, the church militant, may nakalista ng mga pangalan doon. But also, we have, uh, um, uh, there is this, uh, binabanggit dito na, um, sabi, uh, refer clear reference to saints already in heaven in the intermediate state. So yung mga naunang saints. In the Old Testament and unto the New Testament, yun yung reference niya. And then, Jesus, the mediator of the New Covenant. And letter H, the blood to the blood of sprinkling. Items G, yung letter G, mediator, mediatory work ni Christ sa New Covenant. And letter H, as the blood sprinkling, are closely related. Jesus mediating blood is superior, no? as against uh, the sprinkling of the blood in the Old Covenant. So the point here is, sa exhaustive na pagpapaliwanag ni Pastor Noel uh, sa eight items na ito, the church on earth even now is linked with the larger communion of angels and perfected spirits in the presence of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So brinig daw niyo yung chapter... Um, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 to 24, binake down niya ito para may paliwanag ng maayos and I hope uh, nasundan natin uh, na meron tayong communion with the angels in festive gathering, also in the perfected spirits in the presence of God and the Lord Jesus Christ na ang iglesia ay merong tayo dito sa lupa na kinalalagyan and also, meron ng mga nauna sa atin ng mga saints. Now, in the pulpit commentary, such is the vision by the contemplation of which the inspired writer, si Paul, would arouse his readers amid their trials and wavering to realize the things that are eternal. Sinasabi niya, ang vision na ito, ang pag, pag, uh, pagsulat ni Pablo na ito, ay inaarouse yung mga puso ng mga tagapagbasa na dumadaan sa mga paghihirap at kumbaga nagaano na uh, ano ba yung wavering sa Tagalog? Um, Nag-waver. <laughs> Medyo lumalambot ang alam mga tuhod sa kanilang kinatatayuan. To realize that the things are that thing the things that are eternal he would have them pierced with the eye of faith beyond this visible scene into the world invisible which is no less real. If they were perplexed and disheartened by what they found around them, by the opposition of the world and the fewness of the faithful, he bids them associate themselves in the thought with those countless multitudes who were on their sides. So sinasabi dito sa public commentary, dumarating sa punto na nangihina yung mga tagapagbasa ni Pablo, yung mga, the churches, the people. And they have to be, uh, ang gilamit na term dito is, with the eye of faith beyond the visible seen into the world invisible. Na makita natin yung future na kalalagyan natin which is from the church mil uh, militant to the church triumphant, may katagumpayan ng iglesia. Kahit, sabi dito, may opposition ang mundo sa atin o onti lang ang mga nananampalataya o ang mga nananatili. At makita natin na instead of associating ourselves o yung mga believers na, na sinusulatan ni Pablo, instead of associating themselves in a seemingly losing battle in, on earth, ma-associate natin ang ating mga sarili sa countless multitudes who were on our side. The picture indeed is indeed in some respects ideal for the actual church on earth does not come up to the idea of the church of the firstborn, but, is, but it is presented according to God's purpose for His people and it rests with us to make it present reality to ourselves. So meaning, uh, kung ano yung katagumpayan na ine-enjoy na mga naunang mga uh, kasama natin, imagine this, if someone here sa ating gathering, uh, as a member of the church, God forbid, eh nauna, no? nauna na sa langit, nasa intermediate state na siya. Ang sinasabi dito na we must have that view of um, 
uh, rejoicing with them, knowing na eventually the church militant, yung mga paghihirap natin dito, yung paglaban natin dito, ay makakasama rin natin ng Panginoon sa Kristo in the church, as the church triumphant. Ayan. So, pupunta na po tayo, tapos na tayo sa terminology, we will now jump into the key images. Ayan. So, the first note is, two images are rooted in, in the Old Testament while one is uniquely Pauline in the New Testament. Isa, rooted sa Old Testament. Pagpalagay natin yung terminology kanina na kahal, which is uh, the assembly, and the other is uh, Pauline uh, as the ecclesia. Pero the point here is, these images combine together to reflect the Trinitarian base of the New Testament theology of the church, which is first, people of God. So, yung mga key text. Sabi po sa note, it can refer to a local congregation as well as to the more general company of believers. Yung people of God, pag sinabing people of God, ay nire-refer siya sa congregation, we can be called as the people of God at Uh, in the Old Testament root, sabi dito, Israel as God's elect people. So, ang pinanggagalingan na, na terminology ni Pablo sa kanyang mga sulat, pag in-address niya ang mga believers as people of God, is also referring to the elect people of God, which is Israel. Um, kaya nga may pagtatalo yung ano, desp- dispensationals uh, at saka yung covenantal na Uh, ang, ang church ba ay ito na ba ang bayan ng Israel? O ito na ba yung uh, pinalit ng Panginoong Diyos sa Israel? Is it the church? So, uh, some are saying na hindi, meron pa rin bayan ng Israel na ba save in, in the uh, end times. And some people are saying na hindi, ito na yung continuation or yung actuality ng church, which is in Romans chapter 9, hindi ako nagkakamali, correct me man mo. Um, Doon binanggit na not all Israel are Israel. Referring, ang kahit hudyo ka, it doesn't mean na ikaw ay parte na ng elect people of God. Because not all Israel are Israel. Kung sino lang ang pinili ng Diyos, yun ang actual Israel. At ang, ang uh, qualifying ano doon is those who obey Christ, those who follow Christ, yung nananampalataya sa Kanya. So here are the significance. Letter A, it highlights the divine acts of election and effectual call. Letter B, it indicates the continuity and discontinuity between Old Testament Israel and the New Testament Church. Ito yung refer ko kanina. Some people believes na um, the, the uh, Old Testament Israel are still existing yung mga remnants, and eventually si Save Salon ni God, and uh, naniniwala tayo that in the New Covenant, we are the Israel of God. It removes the Jew-Gentile division. More on this later sa preaching ko uh, ng hapon, kasi doon nabanggit sa Ephesians chapter 2, yung pagkatanggal ng dividing um, wall of hostility. So makita natin dito, Indicative na tinanggal ni God yung dividing wall of hostility between Jews and Gentiles, creating one man to be united to himself, kaya mas naiintindihan natin na yung bansang Israel and the Church of Christ uh, or yung elect people of God in, in the Old Testament times ay pinag-isa ni Kristo sa iglesia, sa church, sa kanyang katawan. And it, uh, letter D, it underscores the requisite of a holy life. Kinakailangan, in qualification, o, o para ma-qualify na ikaw ay isang Israel, uh, o Israel of God, or part of the Church of God, if you will, in the New Testament terminology, eh dapat ikaw ay namumuhay ng may kabanalan. So, the second one, after the people of God, the body of Christ. Nandiyan yung mga key text, magita natin. In this note, it says, uniquely Pauline, the reference is always definite. And it is the body, never a body. So, uh, si Pauline ay very, uh, ay si, si Pauline, si Apostle, <laughs> si Apostle Paul ang gumagamit ng terminology na to na body of Christ. 
at makita natin, kinalify niya that it's na, never a body but the body of Christ. Iisa lang, aktual ng katawan ni Kristo. So here is the significance. Letter A, it highlights the church's union with Christ. It is a whole body that belongs to Christ. Hindi pwedeng two separate, separate in entity na may o, merong Old Testament covenant pa rin na gumagana and merong elect people of God uh, in the nation of Israel at meron ding separate people of God in the uh, in the church. Hindi. Pinag-isa nga niya ito. So, it underscores the unity and diversity of members with one another. Though we are many, we are one body in Christ. So, body of Christ. Isa lang ah, the body of Christ. Hindi a body of Christ. Number three, the temple of the Holy Spirit. It can refer to the individual believer, the local congregation, and to Christians in general. So, pwedeng individual na mananampalataya sa kongregasyon niya at sa mga Kristiyano o sa mananampalataya in general. So, significance po nito is it highlights the sanctified status of the church as consecrated to God. The church is holy. Kinamatay nito ni Kristo. So, kung paano individual ay kinamatayan niya, pinabanal niya, niligtas niya, kung ang iglesia ay uh, ganun din ang nangyari, kinamatayan niya, niligtas niya, sanctified, pinabanal, uh, malinis at dalisay. So, it points, uh, letter B, it points to the foundation of Christ and the apostolic teachings. Makita natin sa Ephesians chapter 2, 20-22, si Christ ang chief cornerstone, the prophets, the, the apostles, are the uh, uh, kasamang pundasyon, no? Built in the foundations of the prophets and the apostles, and Christ being the chief cornerstone. It underscores the church's primary mandate of the worship of God. So, if it is a temple, ano ba yung temple? Bahay, panambahan. Yun ang purpose ng temple. Ang temple po ay hindi bahay partihan. No? Sabihin, ang pinakamandato ng iglesia referring to the temple of the Holy Spirit is for the worship of God. And letter D, it requires the maintenance of purity within the church. Kaya nga, sa, uh, um, ano yun, uh, maintaining marks kasama ang church discipline. Because ang temple ng Panginoon, kung paano si Christ ay may passion and uh, zeal uh, for the house of God, ganun din ang 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 passion and zeal of God to maintain the purity within the church. So here's the concluding observations ni Pastor Noel. Okay? Qualify natin. <laughs> Hindi sa akin ito. The church is redemptively joined to the triune God in contrast with merely creational and providential. So redemptively, redemptively joined to the triune God. Contrasted sa created and providential work ng Panginoon. Um, Makita natin, no? Niredeem, hindi create. Uh, meaning, um, sabi, you were not my people, but now you are my people. May pagre-redeem na nangyari. Kaya nandyan yung justification, uh, yung golden ano yan? chain of salvation uh, nag-work yan sa church. The church has an earthly existence in contrast with the perfected intermediate state of the saints in heaven. So, dito, Sa lupang ito, ang iglesia, uh, uh, contrasted sa mga mananampalataya na nasa kalangitan na. The church maintains a divinely man mandated membership in contrast with what is humanly organized. Ang iglesia, ang nag... Imagine this, sinong nag-accept sa inyo sa membership? Diba? May interview, merong baptism, may proseso ng member, But it is God who worked. Siya yung nagdadagdag ng miyembro. As against human organization na um, o paano magpamember, kailangan mo na magpadoktrina ka o kung ano pa man. May mga prosesong ganun. In the church, it is divinely mandated membership. So if it is a divinely mandated membership, then you must be a member of a local church. Uh, number four, the church is a gathered community in contrast with isolated and detached individualities. Ito yung sasabi ko kanina. Kung sinasabi mo na ikaw ay aniligtas ng Panginoon, dapat kasama ka dun sa called out ones. Nagsama-sama sa pagsamba sa Panginoong Diyos. So, 
uh, hindi ka pwedeng maging lone ranger. So I will end the lecture on this uh, and accept tayo ng mga questions. Teka, lobat na ako. Any questions for our insights? Questions? Sige, isipin nyo mo yung tanong habang nag-iisip ako. <laughs> Maga pa, marami kayong pwedeng tanong. Ah, yan. Habang siniset up yung mic, isip kayo ng tanong. Huwag yung mahirap, ha? Kasi wala si Pastor Noel dito para sa magot. <laughs> ha? May tanong kami. Sound check. Sound check. Check. Sound check. Sound check. Test. Hello. Check. Mike. Hello. 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 Check. Sound check. Sound check. Kasi ba? Kailan ko may extra tayo niya. May extra tayo niya. Iba ba yung bili mo? O iba? Thank you.
Check. Ito na lang siguro. Share-share na lang. <laughs> Ingat lang ha, baka kasi bumigay yung ano. Sound check test. So, yeah. Sige, baka may, ano, may question na. Sa Jimmy. Ay, teka, hindi ako naka-join. Teka. Sige, bro. Hmm. Um, kailangan ma-interview para malaman natin yung profession. Ito para sa lahat, hindi lang sa personal. Kasi since kung si Kuya Roderick nagtanong, uh, para na rin to sa lahat. Uh, kailangan dumaan sa process, nandun yung interview, uh, nandun yung testimony, para masigurado natin na kung sino man yung gusto magpa-member, na dati ng member na ibang church ay genuine believer. And also, kung Mas maganda kung dati kang miyembro sa isang lokal na iglesia, may re, may referral. Mabigyan ng vouch kumbaga. In good standing sa church, walang problema doon. Uh, ngayon kung uh, matagal nang hindi miyembro, ay idadaan pa rin sa proseso. Uh, so kung For example, nabaptize siya sa dating church. Kung si, again na, hindi lang to kay Brother Roderick. Kung sino man. Uh, kasi tayo, ma, ako, gaya ko nagpabaptize ako ulit dito. Hindi yun rebaptism. Okay? Uh, it just so happened that my first baptism ay hindi valid. Kasi I was not yet a believer when I was baptized. So, may mga ganon. May mga false conversions. May mga... Uh, depende sa ano. Depende talaga sa situation. So, kung ma... They determine ng iglesia na aaniban na hindi believer o hindi valid yung baptism, dun lang ibang baptize. Pero kung believer naman, ito transfer lang, in good standing, dapat na yung believer siya, hindi na kailangan i-baptize ulit. Kasi we don't believe in rebaptism. Ayan. Other questions? Check. Ayan. Baka may katanungan pa. check. All right. Ayan, baka may tanong. Kahit hindi related dito, kasi may oras pa tayo. Ah, hindi ko rin. Ayan, sige bro. Hindi ko wala, hindi ko. Yan. Yeah. <laughs> wala. Check, check. Bumitaw. Hello? Hello. Yan. 
Hello, hello, hello. Check, 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 check. check. Yeah. Um, ang question lang kasi dit based sa ano, nire-refer dito yung church is kabuuhan ng uh, mananampalataya. Uh, anong anong right or theology pagdating sa place? Anong kayang pwedeng ano, itawag na? Um, church building. <laughs> yeah. 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 People actually, church uh, believers actually use that term, but for lack of terms, <laughs> minsan uh, inaccept naman natin, na hindi dahan naman natin, nakapu sinabi natin. Oh, nasa church ako. Ang tilto ko ay ito, yung physical ano. So ang important kung yung terminology ay naka ko communicate niya kung ano yung gusto ng sabihin ng tao, kasi ano eh. Um, Uh, as long na hindi hindi nami misunderstood. Mga parehas tayo, nagintindihan natin na pag sinabing church na nasa church ka ay nandoon ka sa place, place yung tinutukoy. Ngayon, uh, may mga gumagamit talaga ng term na uh, sanctuary or the gathering place or uh yun nga, yung church building. So those are acceptable terminologies. Ang iniiwasan natin yung may ma-confuse yung ano kasi may nagsasabi na um bumalik ka na sa church. What does it mean? 'Di ba? Ano ba intento ko yung building? Kasi pwedeng nandito ka sa loob ng gathering place pero hindi ka parte ng iglesia ni Kristo. So maring may confusion doon. So kailangan nagkakaintindihan kayo. Grog. <laughs> oh, hindi pa nakakasal to ba? <laughs> <laughs> Mamatos ta ka dyan. Yeah. Follow up, bro. Okay na. Si, meron? Uh, other? Questions? Hindi ko rin na-expect na maraming tanong kasi preliminary to. Kaya pwede rin kayo magtanong na hindi man related uh, sa ano natin, study natin yan. Going once, going twice. Ako magtatanong. <laughs> so, Jimmy, wala pa ulit. Wala pa. Maga pa, oh. Uy, baka matusta ka dyan, bro. <laughs> Hindi pa nga, ano, baka mabiyuda agad. <laughs> Ako magtatanong. Hindi kayo siya. Ba, eh, Sel, ay, ano? Sel? Ala. Sige, Art, huwag mong hirapan, ha. Dalian mo lang. Sa ano na ako pass? Sa, dun sa Hebrews 12, ah, uh, uh, given yung, ah, uh, Uh, exi- uh, yung gi- binigay dito na breakdown, uh, yung sumunod kasi ng verses, nag-issue ng, I think, ay, yung question ko po is, may hindi lang ako maintindihan sa Hebrews 12. Ta- uh, yung sumunod kasi na verses, nagbigay ng war- uh, warning against apostasy yung author. Tapos yung question ko po is, bakit meron pa rin shake meron pa rin removal of things sa heavens. Kasi ang warning sa sumunod. Ah, can you mention the exact verse? Uh, yung next verses po sa verse 26. 26. At the time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Yeah, tapos, in-explain dyan na yung shaking is removal of yun, things that are shaken. Oh, shakeable. Oh. Bakit sa heavens, meron pa rin shaking. Um, Saka ha. Eh, ang explanation kanina dito, uh-huh. uh, yun na yung triumphant church. Uh-huh. Uh, reference sa Haggai chapter 2, 21. Uh, babasahin na lang ha. 
Uh, so verse 20, simulan natin. The word of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the 24th, 24th day of the month. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I am about to shake the heavens and the earth and to overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I am about to destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations and overthrow the chariots and their riders and the horses and their riders shall go down. Every one by the sword of his brother. On that day declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. Diba inaral natin last long weeks ago <laughs> in the book of Haggai, referring Zerubbabel as a signet ring, si Christ naman, yung king of kings, and um, ito yung parallel verse na ginamit dito sa verse 26 sa Hebrews. So, sa so, so Hebrews 26, at the time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This praise, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. So, ang question mo, brother, bakit may shaking? Bakit may shaking na included yung shaking sa heaven? Tapos ang warning niya, ay parang warning siya against uh-huh. apostasy. Uh-huh. Meron bang mawawala pa sa heaven na ano, kapag nagawa tong shaking? Ah, uh, wala. Uh, uh, uh-huh. Pero bakit kaya... Explain. Bakit siya... Ano, kung makita natin yung reference sa Hagay, ang binabanggit mga, mga kingdoms mga ganun, mga ano so if i if you can remember the verse uh in tearing down strongholds the lofty places yung for we battle not against flesh and blood but against principalities in the air rulers in the high places uh can you pull up the verse uh Ephesians 6 12 aha uh-huh. Sige, uh, for we do not wrestle ito po, eh, ah. against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, yeah. against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Yeah. So kung may shaking, hindi yung heavenly abode or yung kingdom ni God na shake. Kundi those who are, uh, I'm not sure if the same chapter yung sinabi that tries to say, eh, ituloy mo nga, yung, ano, Rulers in the high places, in the heavenly realms, and... Ano na po, eh? armor of God na. Eh. Ah, armor, of the armor of God. Okay, if you can pull up the verse na sinabi doon that, that set up, uh, that set it up, himself up higher than... Um, Ito yata yung term. Second Corinthians. Oh, oh. 10, sige, sige, pakibasa. 10, 5. We destroy arguments yeah. and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Ay, hindi. Sa taas po pala. Uh, verse 4 pala. For the weapons of our warfare yeah. are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Yeah. That? Is it not? But we destroy arguments. Uh-huh. Uh, and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. Yeah. That, I know, sorry. Uh, every lofty opinion raised against the raised knowledge against of God. The knowledge, of God. knowledge of God. So, yung uh, kin- e- e- ipinasok kanina natin yung church militant. Bakit may militancy ang church? Because ito yung shaking na ginaganap. Kaya pag binasihan natin yung reference sa Hagay, war eh, chariots, ano, at yung binasa kanina sa um, we're not battling against flesh and blood, yung Ephesians, right? Um, war din, yung reference niya. So, it is not talking about the kingdom of God that is being shaken kasi ngayon sinasabi, hindi siya nasi-shake. So, kung may nag-aalog, may sinishake, kung may pagyanig man, hindi babagsak ang kingdom ng Panginoon because it is a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So, the things that are shaken are the kingdoms, the principalities in the air, rulers. Pag sinabing rulers in the high places, the idea is may ibang nag-hahari-harian. May ibang nag take nang nag usurp ng authority ni God which is in reference to ano yung huling verse na binasa natin? 2 Corinthians 10 yan, 2 Corinthians 10 Pauline, uh, si, si Paul din ang nag-ano the, the idea na gumegera laban sa mga 
naghahari-arian, principalities in the air, rulers in the high places, na nag-usurp ng authority in Christ. Kasi siya ang hari na mga hari eh. In the end, the church that is militant will be church triumphant. Kasi those that are being shaken, kasama yung mga apostate, which yung apostate, kasama rin dyan yung mga false teachers that sets up their knowledge, uh, their Uh, inaano nila yung knowledge na against the, the knowledge of God, binabangga nila, ito yung mga babagsak, ito yung mga uh, magugupo, mas-shake. Follow up. Um, thank you po. So to make sense lang yung warning against uh, apostasy, parang make sure na you're part of this kingdom yes. na, na uh, shaken. The church militant. Dapat doon ka. Uh, hindi ka doon sa gegerahin ng church militant. And thank And you for Pastor. Baka may follow up. Art request next time dalian mo lang. <laughs> Our Ay bro na. Ayun, um baka yung question ko pero tanong ko na din. <laughs> Birthday mo naman okay lang. Uh, what can you say about the yung an- anong oh nasabi mo na to dati pero pwede mo bang pakiulit yung ano yung view mo sa ano third heaven mga ganun uh, the third heaven ba yung seventh heaven ba third heaven <laughs> oh, oh. pero alam ko yung third heaven ah uh, uh, sure ako na na parang meron oh uh, uh, anong a uh, view mo kasi ano wala <laughs> bumbog mo kasi sinabi yung explanation mo diyan sa ano shaken ba kayo yun yung pa- pwedeng i-park natin ah 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 view lang natin uh, kung ano yung sinasabi ng scriptures uh, 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 about the heavens is yun yung lang definition so ikokonek ko to sa mga tour sa mga heavenly tours na marami silang sinasabi patungkol sa kung ano ang langit na hindi nakabase sa sinabi sa vision ni John at sa revelation kung ano ba ang langit. So anything na magsasabi na ito ang kalangitan, ito ang heaven, apart from the scriptures, is baloney. It is not true. So the question is not stupid. It's actually helpful for us to understand na kung bakit yung kaharian ng, ay yung kalangitan ng Diyos ay para sa mga, sa atin, sa intermediate state natin, kapag tayo namatay, ay nandun tayo sa kalangitan, bago naman tayo dalihin ng Panginoon sa new heavens and new earth maintindihan natin yun na walang nakakaalam <laughs> kung ano talaga actual. Even si John, puro representation sa mga sinasabi niya dahil it is, he's lost for words kung ano ba yung nakita niya nun <laughs> nung time na yun. Ayun. I hope nakatulong yung sagot. Sa, nakaiwas ako sa... <laughs> Baka may follow-up. Sige, mamaya na po. Thank you po. Okay. Mira, hi. Gising na siya. <laughs> Ayan, sa ano yan? Uh, Google Meet. Kasi yan. Ay, Jim. Jim. Ayan, um, question to actually ni Deacon Deco. Ayan. Ayan. Ang question niya po ay, meron po bang minimum age of membership? Uh, minimum of age minimum age of membership. Ibabase natin yan. Walang specific age eh. Uh, pero, obviously, uh, binabase natin siya sa discernment ng tao, ng bata. Uh, if meron na siyang understanding and discernment regarding the scriptures, the gospel, kung naiintindahan niya na to, meron na siyang clear profession of faith na nakita natin. Na, ano, um, ina-accept natin siya sa membership. Kaya nga may mga bata. Pero, we don't baptize infants kasi covenantal tayo. Um, And ang tawag dito, uh, confessional. Kailangan may confession of faith. Merong uh, pag-dideklara uh, ng kanyang pananampalataya, meaning naiintindihan niya. <coughs> Mukutok. <laughs> naiintindihan niya yung pinoprofess na faith. So, wala naman tayong ano. Pati sa ano, ha, yung mat- matatanda yung age. Wala namang limit. Ayan. So, hindi age ang basihan natin. Ah, pero, kailangan ko i-qualify yun. Meaning, Uh, kailangan discerning na yung tao. Yung bata man yan. Baka may follow up siya. Other questions? Paano daw yung mga baby? Paano daw yung mga baby? Ayan, nasagot na yan. 
<laughs> so, uh, d- base po yun talaga sa profession of faith. Yes. Kapag wala silang clear understanding and profession of faith, ang trabaho natin bilang mga magulang at mga members ng church is to teach them hanggang maintindihan nila. Other questions? <laughs> Nagising ni Sebel. <laughs> Other questions? Mahaba pa oras. Again, ah, kahit hindi related sa topic, ay entertain natin kasi mahaba pa yung oras. Ako ang magtatanong, ano masasabi nyo uh, sa term na sinasabi or sa statement na be the church? Be the church. Don't just attend the church, but be the church. Be the... <laughs> Tama ba yun? Nasabihin na be the church. Don't just attend the church, but be the church. Is that right? Ay, ako tinanong yan kasi na-question ako dyan eh. Kung hindi nagkakamali ang memorya ko, yan yata yung una-una naming enkwentro ni Pastor Joseph. Yeah. Nag-post ako nun. Don't just be the church. I don't just attend the church, but be the church. Tapos parang nag-comment niya, kung di ako nagkakamali, nag-comment niya ta si Deacon Dewey. Tapos parang nagkaroon ng mga discussion or something like that. Or basta parang ganun. May memory akong ganun. Pero hindi pa ako reforming nun. Hindi naman. Nag- parang may tanong lang. Na may nalala akong ganun. So, ingat sa, sa ganong statement yung be the church kasi parang igaw lang yun eh. An individual is not a church. Sa pinag-aralan natin, kaleo, and ano isa? Ek. Yung call, called out once ay hindi lang one person. Once. Sabihin mga pin- tinawag ng Diyos. You cannot be a church alone. It is an assembly. Kahal. Sa Hebrew, assembly. Yun yung mga roots nila. So you can't be the church by yourself. Be part of the church, mas tama. Don't uh, just attend the church. Huwag ka lang maging attendee, but member yourself. <laughs> be a member of a church. Ayan. Other questions? Ah, uh, Amor. Again, hindi ako confident sa question ko. Pero, um, yung in relation dun sa sinabi ni uh, Art, yung tanong niya, uh, tama ba yung pagkakaintindi ko? The heavenly places that uh, they're referring to are the uh, 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 kingdom here on the earth that doesn't, that doesn't, ano, ano, Um, parang ano parang kinakalaban nila ang, ano, ang Ay, salita ng uh-huh. Diyos at they are uh, persecuting the church these are the, the or usurping the authority of the, the king of kings and the lord of lords so these are earthly kingdoms um, kinalify natin sa Hagay kasi may mga ano eh, may mga earthly kingdoms na winasak ang Diyos sa lupang ito. Pero sa New Testament, sinabi na doon, rulers in the high places. Um, uh, sorry. No battle against mention God, but against principalities in the air. Rulers in the high places. So may, there's this spiritual realm na tinatawag. So maaring not of this earth, in a sense na heavenly siya dahil it is not of the earth. Anything outside the earth is heaven, heavenly, meaning ibang realm siya. Spiritual, Um, kaya principalities in the air, rulers in the high places, uh, pwedeng literal na nagmamalaki, na tao, institusyon, 
na sineset up nila yung sarili na mas above sa knowledge of God. Uh, and maaring mga spiritual forces din. Hindi pala maaari. Kung kasama din yung mga spiritual forces, doctrine of demons, kaya nga may warning against apostasy. Because the apostates, kasama dyan yung mga false teachers, um, false prophets. Ayan. Kasi pag sinabing, di ba, ano, sa Ephesians, pag sinabing uh, the prince of the air, mga ganang principalities mm-hmm. of the air, parang si Satan, si Satan yun, di ba? And all his cohorts. Yeah. Uh-huh. Dito kasi sa... Dito kasi sa binigay mo sa akin, ano, up strong, strong, uh, Hebrew and Greek. Ang Greek meaning pala, ang Greek ano na, ano, ng heavenly doon. Um, Uranos, parang gano'n. Ang definition niya ay sky, atmosphere, or starry, the starry heavens, spiritual heavens. So, so which tama is naman, consistent tama naman, sa consistent terminology ni Paul. Na rulers in the air, uh, principalities in the air, rulers in the high places. Um, kasi nga, ang premise, we don't battle against flesh and blood. So, if we don't battle against flesh and blood, tinutukoy, the outside realm of earth. Kaya ako natanong kanina yung third heaven, kasi... <laughs> Uh, may napanood kasi ako before na parang ictus, ano siya, uh, videos, mm-hmm. YouTube. Tinurn down na nila. Hindi ko lang ba nila tinurn down. Pero during that time, it looked like it made sense. Um, hindi ko ninyo. Parang parang seven eh. <laughs> so sabi dito kasi, um, sa 26 nga, the removal of things that are shaken, that is things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaven, shaken may remain. So I was thinking about the angels that also been made. Uh, the, the, the fallen angels. Mm. They are also in the heaven. Mm. In the realm. In the realm. Of spiritual realm. Uh, oh. Parang ganun. Yeah. Part sila nung the sinabi ko kanina na the realm of Satan and all his cohorts. So, may sense naman yung idea na kasama ba dyan yung mga fallen angels. Eh, sila yung mga demons eh. Sila yung may doc- doctrines of demons. Sila rin yung ma sa church. Yan. Kasama sila dun. Pang ilang layers sila ng heaven? Uh, pang 65th. <laughs> job. Thank you. All right. Other questions? May 30 minutes pa tayo. 30, 20... Five minutes. Online? Okay. Okay na, kahit hindi related. Ito eh, tanong ka. Ha? Kung wala na? Wala na talaga? Going once? Going twice? Okay, sa Jimmy. Ma- uh, ba- basta malinaw ah. Medyo struggle ako kanina kasi talaga pag si Pastor Rewela gumawa ng ano, medyo ano eh, complicated. Hindi naman complicated. Actually, madali na siyang intindihin kasi inaral na niya si eh, na niya sa very comprehensive naman na lecture notes pero may mga terms pa rin talaga na nakaka ano, nakaka-challenge yan by once by twice ah yes sir wala okay sige sige tayo muna langin Our good and gracious Father, we thank you for this time na na-spend namin sa pag-aaral kung ano nga po ba ang iglesia. We pray, Lord, na patuloy niyo kaming samahan sa mga aaralin pa namin ngayong, hapon ito, ngayong araw na ito. Uh, patuloy niyo kaming bigyan ng kaliwanagan, ng pag-iisip sa pamagitan ng iyong banal na espiritu. And let your word uh, work in us 
uh, to sanctify us and to make us holy. Even Lord, sa mga pagsasalusulohan ay pagkain ng araw na ito, uh, pagpalain niyo po ang managhandahan nito, Panginoon, at paging kalakasan at kalusugan namin nito. Ingatan niyo rin po ang mga kapatid namin na wala pa sa lugar na ito, sa kalong biyahe. Ingatan niyo po sila. Kung po ang aming dalangin, at salamat sa Panginoon Yesus na tayo magsabi ng Amen. Okay, as-